I'm here with Jamal Calder, uh, a member of the Ballet Hispanico. And I want to talk to you about your upcoming season. Um, it's going to be with the Joyce. That's right. And it starts it's on the 15th. The 15th of April, yes. And it's a two-week season, and uh, we're just two weeks away. Yes, we're very close to it, yes. Now, one of the things I was most impressed with when I saw you at the Apollo was uh, over the last couple of years, I've seen you grow as an artist, and I've seen this wonderful natural progression. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and uh, yes, but it's, it's great to see when you see someone who is building on their art. Mm -hmm. And so, and I think that's a direct relationship to the direction that this company is moving in. Yes, I think that's absolutely right. I think uh, Eduardo Valaro, our artistic director and fearless leader, he has uh, brought this vision onto the company and I was very fortunate to be a part of that vision and to really be on this journey with him where he's uh, seeking and learning more about the culture of the Latino voice and the Latino and Hispanic heritage and with that also bringing it into the community of the dance world. So it's not just for the Latinos only, it's for the dance community and dance lovers alike to see a different perspective of dance and art, and especially for Ballet Hispanico and those fans who are near and dear to the Ballet Hispanico uh, family, they get to see uh, not necessarily a different, but just uh, a stem away from what the traditional Ballet Hispanico is known to be as. Um, it's very important to continue that uh, journey and that lineage, and it's also equally important to recognize and to be familiar with where we came from so that we can grow from there as well. Well, you know, what was, what's interesting is when I saw you at the Apollo, um, I saw you in a number of different works. Yes, that's right. And each time you came out, and a lot of those works, you were front and center. Yes. <laughs> Except it's a fabulous <laughs> when, I, when I saw you, um, you, were, you came in with a different approach to each role. Mm -hmm. So I'm wondering how, what is, what kind of preparation mm -hmm. do you usually do to prepare yeah. for a role? Yeah, um, it takes a lot to prepare. I think it really starts as soon as I wake up, say for a performance day, the, the energy that I need to prepare for that evening show is very crucial and important. Each piece has, as an artist, I have the responsibility to take each work and to honor what the choreographer wants. And I take that very, very personally because I want to feel fulfilled in each piece as well. Uh, so in the morning after I get ready for my ballet class and I take my ballet class and I go into the theater, I have my headphones on and I'm really in a, uh, in a preparatory phase. Um, and that means really getting my muscles together, really focusing on my breathing patterns, because with, like you said, I was in every piece, it's very important to practice your breathing and so that you have longevity throughout the whole entire show, so that you don't just all of a sudden go, I have to get through this, I have to get through this, I gotta get it done. Um, so it's very important for me to find that, find that calmness throughout each work and to give highlight to each piece. Um, I like to remember what the choreographers uh, have talked to the dancers about during their creation. Um, kind of like the bigger picture kind of idea. We talk about that a lot in rehearsals uh, with Michelle Manzanales, our rehearsal director. What's the bigger picture? What's the big idea? And then from there, let's talk about the more nitty gritty dancer friendly stuff, the notes, the turnout, the uh, height of this and that and the fourth. Um, but it's very important to think about, keep that big idea in mind and that theme that you have. It's very important and for me, that's what makes the piece uh, never stale for me. It's what keeps it going because we're in a repertory company and these pieces have to live for a long time. So you want to keep reinventing the idea, making it fresh and new. And as an artist, that's what more can I ask for? Now you use the word artist. Mm -hmm. And when I watch you, that's what I see. Oh, and this you. is one of the reasons why I wanted to interview you, <laughs> because um, uh, I, like I, I bring a lot of uh, non-dancers right. with me when I come yeah. to the uh, performances. Because when I bring another dancer, they're always talking about, well, look at this feet, this turn out, you mm -hmm. see that turn. Yeah. But when I bring someone who's not a dancer to a performance, I say, what did you think? They're telling me about how that person or how that work made them feel. Yes. Yes. And then I'm watching them sometimes, I'll look over, mm -hmm. and I can tell they're not looking at the leg or the foot, 
they're watching right. that person really from the sternum up and Absolutely. they're feeling them. Absolutely, there's something very special about that idea of feeling because you're, as an artist, if I'm in the moment, my audience member is going to be in that moment as well. If I'm concentrating on my turnout, my feet, uh, and don't get me wrong, I concentrate about that all the time, but in the moment of performance, I, my bigger picture is how, how do I want to shape and craft the space that I'm dancing in? How do I want to command my audience without them knowing that I'm commanding them? How do I want them to feel what I'm feeling? Well, not exactly what I'm feeling, but I want them to feel something. I don't want them to walk away and just go, oh, that was pretty, that was very clean. Um, I really want them to walk away and have an uh, idea of what the pieces were about. And as an artist, that is, that is very important. Uh, the choreographer can, I, I look at choreography as the blueprint. And the artist is the one who actually builds the house. They make it, they put the color, they paint it, they, they do all these magical things to it that make it pop and come alive. And that is very important. That's where the artistry for me comes in. And that's, it's a huge role and a responsibility to not only respect and honor what the blueprint of the choreography is from the choreographer or the rehearsal director or director, it's equally important for us to go into the space, into the theater with the lights and the stage and everything, and there's an audience, and really make that three-dimensional idea come alive. And that's what's important as an artist. And I, and I feel that from you when I Thank watch you. you perform. Thank you. So when I want to ask you, where, you're not a New Yorker, by the way. Um, I'm not a New Yorker by birth. Yes. Um, no, not by birth. Um, however, I have lived in New York for well over maybe 19 years now. The reason, the reason <laughs> I'm asking is because you came from, which, where are you from? Um, I graduated from Professional Performing Arts School, which is affiliated with Alvin Ailey American Dance Theater. And I also dance with Restoration Dance Theater and Harlem School of the Arts. So you've been here? I've been here, years. yeah. All my dance training is here in New York, yes. Because um, I, I got the feeling, I read your bio, yes. and I knew that you were, you were originally from someplace else. Yes, yes. But I didn't realize that you were, that you basically, well, you, we'll, we'll make you a New York. I mean, yes, <laughs> yes. Essentially, I, uh, I was born in North Carolina. I was raised in Barbados, and uh, I moved to California. My fam I'm in a military family, so uh, we moved around a lot. But then we found New York as our home when I was uh, around eight or nine years old was when New York became my home. So when did you start dancing? When did, when did you get the idea that you wanted to dance? <laughs> Funny enough, uh, dance came because soccer wasn't available. <laughs> uh, soccer, or football as I, we call it back home, it was the sport of choice for me. It's what I thought my career was going to be. I, I planted that all out in my head. And we moved to New York, and we didn't find any soccer leagues in our neighborhood or anywhere. So um, randomly, one day, I was, in, uh, I was in school. I was in the third grade. And Ballet Tech, uh, led by Ellie Felt, came to my school and they had an open to audition. And they had this outreach program where they brought children into Manhattan every day, drove them twice or three times a week to take a ballet class and then go back. So that's where it started for me, uh, was through Ballet Tech. And I was one of those little kids that would get on the yellow bus and drive into Manhattan. And uh, it was exciting. It was, and you saw a, people from different boroughs, and you all came and took the class together, and then you went to the Brooklyn side or the Staten Island side. So that was something that was really great and amazing for me, and that was where it started. And then through there, going into high school, and then college, and... So uh, once you started, you were hooked. Once I started, that track just, it's still going. It's still going to this very moment, and something I'm really proud of and excited to keep going on. Well, we look forward to seeing oh. much more from you this year as your career progresses. Oh, thank you so much. I really appreciate and, it. And uh, I'm excited about the joy season. And so uh, please come out and see Jamal and the rest of Ballet Hispanico. They'll be at the Joyce uh, beginning April 15th. Yes, yes. April 15th through the 27th of April. Yes. Thank you again. Thank you so much. Thank you.